Man, this is lifestyles of the poor and unfucking fortunate. But I tell you what, but 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 bitch, we got V. Guess we can kind of get into this part. How did you link up with Jelly? How did that become? Fat, okay, so all right, this is actually a good one. Um, goddamn, I didn't want to smoke a cigarette on here, but I got to. We pause. No, you're good. Yeah. Shit, can I get a cigarette, please, baby? So all right, after doubt me now, drop. Talk about Jelly. Yeah. My bubble. After Doubt Me Now, actually, I want to say it was, it was, it may have been in between Doubt Me Now and Finally Famous. I can't really remember because I don't really remember the exact year. I could probably look it up and get it back to you. But, um, so, uh, Eric, E. E. Matt. E. Did the white boys can't rap to us? Y'all remember that shit? Mm -hmm. Remember that shit? Mm -hmm. So, it was me, Stat, Struggle, <laughs> Alexander King, was D -Ray on there? D Ray was there. He was with us. Uh, yeah. I want to say Worm was on there too. Rest in peace, Worm. God yeah. damn, smoke. Got your shirt. We got we brought your shirt. Fuck back. yeah, I still yeah. been rocking that the whole time. No, um, so like uh, that. That's one of the funniest stories ever because like you know none of us had met. Jelly and Struggle and all they knew each other. They were all Nashville boys. But I was the Memphis boy. I was the only motherfucker from Memphis. Everybody else on that whole show was from Nashville. So I'm going into the show automatically thinking because me and Eric, me and Ian done chopped it up. We done talked about it. Uh, you know, and this is back, I was booking my own shows. I didn't have no booking agent or none of that shit. Because Paula Juicy just signed a distribution deal with me. You know, it was a straight up distribution deal, record deal. That's all, that's it. Yeah, Everything yeah. else, you got to hire your own people. Wasn't like a developmental. Yeah, it wasn't nothing like yeah. that. It was done like that. Which I was cool with that because I got to learn so much more growing up just on my own because I had to. But, so... I booked the show. I sent E the contract and everything. He fucking Western Union me the deposit or whatever. He's telling me who all is going to be on the show. Of course, I'd heard a stack. I'd never heard of Jelly or Struggle or anybody else. I'd heard a stack. That was it. So we get to, I want to say our first show was in like Knoxville or some shit. Or Chattanooga. So we pull up to the first show. We're all staying in the same hotel. We're all fucking babies too. God damn, this is so long ago. We were fucking kids. I don't give a fuck. We might have been old enough to drink, but we weren't old enough to get in trouble and drink. <laughs> so, but so we pull up. Struggle had his braids down in here. Jelly had long braids, and we're all meeting up in the parking lot and shit. And uh, me and Jelly just kind of hit it off. Struggle's first words to me, I swear, he don't fucking back me up on this. He walks up. He goes, "You know, you sampled my grandpa." I was like. <laughs> Who the oh, fuck's your grandpa? Oh, good old boys. He was like, way legit. So I was like, whoa, shit. Then, oh, hey. Hey, big guy. How, hey, <laughs> calm down now. Everybody relax. And this is back before Struggle was cut. Struggle was big boy. Yeah, that's Brady Struggle. That's like Brady like, Struggle was 2000, <laughs> 2000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2004 ish, yep. right around there. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's when I met Jelly. Oh, yeah. So, me and Struggle laughed and shit. He was like, I'm not gonna lie, I fucking love the song. I was like, so we're cool. He was like, because I'm like there with like one of my homeboys and my DJ, and he's just like, Kind of intimidating. I'm a little guy. I struggle is not a little dude. And his first words were, You sample my grandpa with his deep ass voice and shit. <laughs> What's up, Struggle? It was good seeing him the other night, too. For um, sure, man. But, like, you know, we, we, we all chopped it up so much on that tour. And me and Jelly just kind of clicked because I was the smallest and he was the biggest. And it was like our ongoing joke. I was the little guy, he was the big. It was funny because I was living in Georgia at the time. I was in a fucked up relationship with a mouthy bitch <laughs> and um jelly calls me what are you doing bubba i'm sorry all of our stories that's how every conversation yeah. starts out with jelly roll with me i don't know how y'all start out about it. It. what are you doing stuff. bubba that's, yeah. i mean it's every one of them yeah. unless he's in jail or something then it'll be different <laughs> but he's like what are you doing bubba look man i'm sitting here with my buddy stoner we got all these beats man i think we should uh we should finally do that collaborative album we were talking about doing that uh, other people had different ideas of going routes with it, but I think we know what to do. We just throw on some hard beats and just fucking rap. <laughs> I mean, that's just how Jelly is. Just yeah. goddamn turn on the beat and let's just fucking rap. Yeah. It's not easy when you know what you're doing. I mean, it's not hard when you know yeah. what you're doing. So, like, I was like, look, Jelly, I'm not going to lie to you, brother. Um, I had somebody fuck me over, been taking money from me over the last few years, and I'm kind of fucked up on bread right now. I'm not even going to lie to you. Yeah. I ain't got no ride right now. I just got a DUI. My truck broke down. I can't get there. I can't get to Nashville right now. Right. He was like, well, what do you need? I was like, a flight? <laughs> he was like, done, Bubba. I was like, yeah. well, let me know what's up. He's like, I'll call you back in eight minutes. <laughs> he calls me back literally like eight minutes later. He's like, your flight leaves tomorrow at 9 a.m. Don't miss it. I was like, 
tomorrow? He was like, pack your shit. You're coming to Nashville. I was like, oh. I was like, Jelly, I'm, I'm, I'm at the time I was living at my girl's mom's house at the time down in Georgia. Yeah. So I'm like, bro, like I'm literally done with this bitch. Mm -hmm. I just need an exit strategy because I ain't got no car. I'm down here just like, what? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. So Jelly literally like said, fuck that bitch, brother. We got this shit. I got you. Like, just be at the airport. I don't give a fuck if you got to get a taxi. I'll send you money. I don't care. And sure enough, next morning I woke the fuck up, told the bitch I was out, fucking flew to Nashville, and we started no filter that day. And I want to say the first, the first song we recorded. Oh man, dude, I can't really remember. But the, I do remember the first song we recorded was one of the heater heaters on the album. What's that whole album is jam? Break the knob off? No, that break the knob off was actually like the last one we recorded, and it became like the single off the album. But like when we first recorded that very first song, we looked at each other and we was like, "Yeah, all you gotta do is turn the beat on and let us rap." Yeah. But like even then, you know, like I was telling Jelly, like Jelly would be walking through the studio singing and shit. Yep. And I hear it, it's like something about dude. Dude got something else. Yeah. He got something other than just rap. Well, and y'all had worked. I'm tripping because y'all had worked together snow on, album. on the snow album. I forgot about yeah, the snow album came before that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was early. Over there. Actually, that was actually not too early or before that. It was probably no, two years. No, it was year and even maybe that long. a year. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it was like a year before that because mm -hmm. you was up here in the Batmobile. Yeah, in the in the in the Magnum, the black and yellow jank. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that was actually a pretty dope little situation too because y'all both know how Jelly is, and I know he's gonna see this. Jelly every day, call Paul, call Juicy. We got to get in the studio with them. We got to figure this out. Like, dude, that's not like that with Paul and Juicy. You can't just start. They're Paul and Juicy. They're Paul and Juicy, bro. It's like, I don't give a goddamn. You're a little white. Make it happen, Bubba. And I'm like, shit, dude. Okay, whatever. So, Project Pat found out I had a white rapper. Then he put together that 3 Six Mafia still has their white rapper. Their white rapper has a white rapper. And he had just signed BPZ to a, a Money Train. So he was like, me and Pat and Juicy yeah. were on a show. We were at a show. We was out of town. We was in uh, Dallas, Texas at a show eating at some restaurant. And uh, Pat goes, hey, man. Uh, so, look, I had this idea. Uh, so, you know, I got me a white artist, right? Paul and Juicy still technically got them a white artist, right? <laughs> and now you, they white artists, got your own white artist, right? I was like, yeah, where you going with this, Pat? <laughs> He's like, I think we need to do a goddamn coupe album. I was like, hmm. My work. Okay. Yeah. What are you talking about? Me, Jelly Roll, and BP? He's like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Call it Snow. I was like, the group's name is Snow. He's like, yeah, because y'all all white, baby. Snow is all white. <laughs> I was like, Dude, I don't know if this will work. Okay, and it goes back. It goes back to spelling differently. I said. I said. I told him. I said. You got to take the W off. Yeah. He's like, whatever you say, baby. Whatever you. What you a boss too now? See you ain't. See see. This is Project Pat. <laughs> see 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 white. See white. 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 You ain't no regular rapper no more. You a boss, baby. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You can tell me what to do sometimes. I was like, sometimes, right? He was like, don't get it twisted. I'm a boss, too. I was like, all right, what's going on now? He was like, you heard it, Snow. You should take W off, S-N-O, baby, S-N-O. And we were sitting there, and I was like, I was sitting there just thinking about it. I was like, all right. I called Jelly. I called Jelly, like, hey, man, uh, Project Pat has a, uh, a business proposition for us. Jelly didn't even give a fuck what it was. He was like, I'm goddamn down. I was like, because oh, oh, yeah. 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 Jelly was still starving at the time. He was no, hungry sure. for it. And, that, was, uh, that was during the chat. I mean, he was, was opening up for me. Yeah. He was opening up for me and like killing every show. Like everywhere we went, he was killing it. Like building his buzz constantly everywhere we went. And uh, Jelly was living with me at the time. Me and dude. Uh, Paul and Juice was like, all right, look, we finally got time. Uh, Two weeks from now, we got studio time for like a whole week, mm -hmm. and we'll come back. We can do two weeks if we need two, three weeks, because I know you don't like rushing albums. I was like, thank you. So like, but, but it being three of us, instead of just little old me, three of us knocked that goddamn album out in a fucking like a week and a half. Like, cause we, they came in with an arsenal of beats. And they had goddamn uh, Lil Lodi come in. Yeah, they had everybody. They had uh, fucking yeah. Billy West come in on the keys. Like, we had guitarists in that bitch, bass players. We had the whole fucking nine. 
And at this point, in the first time in my life, I'm a boss. You know what I'm saying? I'm like up in here with my artist Jelly Roll over here, killing every verse. Yeah. And that's when he did Pain No More. So, Pain No More, that song Pain No More on the Snow Out, where he's singing, it's just him on it. Because um, the reason why it's just him on it is because that's his fucking song. I didn't, didn't, didn't need no rapping. Bro, the first, you know, what's crazy, just before you do that, he was singing that song to me on a prison call mm -hmm. when he was locked up. He'd mm -hmm. written it in jail. He was he like, did. bro, I got this song, but it's not me. So that just, I'm just co-signing what you were saying. Like, so he was singing that to me over the phone. The first time I heard him sing it, so like you said, he'd had it written for a while. Because he, yeah. I mean, he had, he would just walk around singing it. Yep. And uh, we were riding in the car, coming back from the show. We had this chick with us in the van. It was when I had that old doo-doo brown ass van. You remember that time? I had a doo-doo brown Ford van that was a piece of shit, but we rode that bitch like a done. fucking fan. I'm tell you that. Brown. We called it motherfucking doo-doo brown. <coughs> and uh, we uh, we were riding back from a show. Jelly was driving because for some reason, Mr. Convict had the only license in the car. Well, not like that dude was a fucking narcoleptic and he'd fall asleep at the wheel. Can't have that on tour. But this is back when Jelly, you know, Jelly's back at Jelly. He's doing Jelly. He's got like three phones. He's driving with yep. three phones. One's on Facebook. One's on MySpace. One's on email. He's just like, I'm like, bro, drive. So the chick's sitting up front. I'm sitting right behind Jelly. He starts singing that song. And I already heard it once, but he just starts singing it. 15 years old. And he starts going. And the chick in the front seat just starts she just gets all the way into the song, bro. Mm -hmm. She gets completely into the song. And by verse two, she's fucking boohooing. And Jelly don't stop. He just keeps on going. He keeps on going. There's no music playing. He's singing a cappella. And um, that night, I looked, I told Jelly straight up. And this was fucking 2012, 2013, maybe. Yeah, 2012, 2013. I told Jelly straight up. No, 2011. It was like 2011. No way, it might be before that. I broke up my baby mama in 08. Yeah, this was like 2010, right when he first came to Memphis or whatever. So uh, I told him that day, I said, like, bro, that's, that's fuck this rap saying. shit, bro. Yeah. No offense to the fans, yeah. but fuck this rap shit, Jelly. Man, he was on we know you can rap, bro. Everybody knows you're a monster. And he rapped with no paper and pen. Jelly was on there in freestyle. Every time. I made him start writing his lyrics down once we started making some money. I was like, bro, you got to at least go back and write this shit down. Because I can go in and type this shit up, date it, time it. I wrote this verse. How about that? Bro, what he would, what I saw that he would do that would trip me out is he'd get a piece of paper. And write down punchlines. He would write the end word. the word. The end word. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Dude, yeah, he would yep. put the, he would tag that motherfucker on the wall and just write down 10 punch or 12 punch words. And it's like, yep. and he would freestyle. He would just freestyle yeah. everything else them words. Yeah. It was fucking yeah. incredible, dude. It was That's like, crazy. it was something I've still to this day never seen anybody do. Jelly was very ahead of his time when it comes to his music abilities. Um, so that night, when I told him, I was like, brother, get your ass in the door with the rap shit. But that singing shit's gonna take you a long way. Yeah. And like, you know, once he started hitting the therapeutic music and shit, you yep. know, that's when he started tapping into the singing and stuff. And, like, that's when I started hearing him transitioning. And, like, mm -hmm. the last few projects he's done over the last few years, like, I, I can... You know, Jelly still loves to rap, though. That's For that. Sure. See, Jelly's so smart because he loves to rap. He loves spitting some straight gangster shit, straight baller shit, funny shit, goofy shit. But he's also smart enough businessman to know where the goddamn bag's at. Yeah. Like seeing him fucking sing Simple Man with Shine Down. Did y'all see this shit? Yeah, yeah, oh my God, dude. I had I teared up watching it like yeah. 30,000 people. Like, dude, what the fuck? Yeah, man. yeah, but I mean, with all that being said, man, uh, to the fans, to the people watching, I am beyond proud of my brother. Yeah. I heard something in that man a long time ago that y'all finally get to fucking hear, and I am so proud of my brother. The motherfucker's got a billboard in Times Square right now. Right yeah. now. Yeah. Right as we speaking, right now. Yeah. So shout out to my brother Jerry. And he even was doing that also on 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 Demons that y'all did. Oh yeah. That was that was like early jelly harmonizing. Yeah. He still yeah. My demons. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's probably one of my favorite records. Demons, I love Demons. Yeah. Like Demons is Demons is a a dope ass song because me and Jelly's chemistry is dope because we know each other so well. Mm -hmm. You know, we get in the studio, we hear a beat. 
He'll throw an idea about what it needs to be about. I'll throw an idea about it. And we might even scratch both of those ideas and meet in the middle somewhere or choose one of those ideas and combine our thoughts. And like, even if you go back and listen to any No Filter, any Snow album, anything me and Jelly did, we, we know what the fuck we're doing. Yeah. When we get in that studio, especially with Stoner, like, you know, because Stoner is, he's like that link, you know, like me and Stoner and Jelly, that's why I even said straight up, Jelly, if you want to come back to the rap world, don't, <laughs> I'm joking, please do come back, just for one more album. No Filter 3, we're going to have Sano and Stoner in the studio. Yeah. And see what them two fucking geniuses can come up together. Yeah. Because I'll give Stoner, I'll take my invisible hat off to T Stoner. That's my motherfucking brother. That boy is a monster. Yeah. And all I did was found somebody with the same quality as him in my city. And I'm telling yeah. you, man, like, them two boys get in the studio together? <sighs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. He can play drums. He can play guitar. Shit. Stoner. Yeah. What's up? 